Hey everybody, Mike here. So it's official. Starlink is entering the Russia-Ukraine war, and the consequences could be huge. Since the start of the war, Mikhail Fedorov, the vice prime minister and the minister of digital transformation in the Ukraine, has been appealing to Western technology companies to apply pressure on Russia to stop this war. This includes Tim Cook directly appeal uh, for Apple, um, YouTube, Twitter, Google, uh, appealing to either stop service in Russia, including things like Netflix, or to stop allowing Russian government to advertise on these platforms. And he's having reasonable success. Uh, various companies have, have taken some action to, in a sense, you know, put pressure on Russia. And he's also been appealing in a few different areas, which I'll talk about in a bit, to actually recruit people in the Ukraine and elsewhere to help in the cyber war aspects of the conflict. But early Saturday morning, he appealed to Elon Musk on Twitter, saying, while your rockets successfully land from space, Russian rockets attack Ukrainian people. You know, right to the heart. And what he wants is to be able to use Starlink terminals in the Ukraine to ensure continued coverage or connectivity to the internet. But he's also asking Elon Musk himself to appeal to the Russian people. In Russia, Elon Musk is well respected. And the idea of him appealing directly to, as he puts it, sane Russians um, to, to stand back and, and really stand up to stop the war. So when I was doing the research for this video, I spent a lot of time thinking about what a company like SpaceX would consider when they're evaluating if they would take action on something like this. And there are a lot of different aspects to think about, but minutes before I was going to start recording this video, the speculation was removed. Elon Musk replied to the tweet confirming that Starlink was now active in the Ukraine and that more user terminals would be on their way. Now, no specifics on exactly how many user terminals. Uh, he also says more user terminals, so it implies that there are already some in there. Um, I don't know if this is part of testing. Typically, in terms of coverage, one of the limiting factors is the government granting licenses. This is really a shortcut to that process. They have a direct invitation to start providing coverage in Ukraine. Now, Starlink has been active in Poland since September 2021, around six months. So there must be ground stations somewhat nearby, at least close enough to cover Poland. And with Elon Musk's tweet, that seems to suggest that it can also extend coverage into the Ukraine. But what I really want to focus on is SpaceX taking a stand in the conflict between Russia and the Ukraine and what it might mean for Starlink in the future. Russia has a lot of different ways they could mess or try to interfere with Starlink. In fact, the NRO director, Christopher Scholes, actually warned satellite operators that Russia might take action and extend this conflict into space. He specifically said, ensure that your systems are secure and that you're watching them very closely. Russians are effective cyber actors. Now, we didn't go into details on what specific threats you should be watching out for or what types of satellites might be under attack. The U.S. clearly has a lot of capability that relies on space. The GPS, the Global Positioning System, uh, imagery systems. Now, of course, the NRO has their own systems, but increasingly the U.S. government is relying on commercial imagery providers like Planet Labs and Maxar to provide coverage, more coverage, over areas of interest. Any one of those could be a target. And now by kind of putting themselves into the conflict, SpaceX has really opened up Starlink for similar attention. Now, Starlink is a beta service, and it hasn't really been tested at the scale of a war, so I'm very interested to see whether any aspects of it are actually challenged or tested 
by the Russians in this conflict. I mentioned earlier in terms of Fedorov's appeal, he was appealing to these Western technology companies, but he's also appealing to the hacker community, looking for IT soldiers who can actually assist the Ukraine in defending themselves against Russian cyber attacks. And it's really called into highlight the cyber aspects of this war. Now, it's not new that Russia is particularly adept at merging physical conflict with cyber conflict, using cyber attacks to soften a target before launching physical attacks. That's exactly what happened in this start of the war. So now you've got Ukraine arming themselves for cyber war. You've got the Russians already adept at cyber war, and potentially Starlink is stuck in the middle by providing connectivity to the people in Ukraine. So Russia has a vested interest in interfering with those internet connections or somehow using them, monitoring them. And that really opens up a lot of different avenues for Russia to attack. So at the basics, they could try to disrupt Starlink by physically interfering with the satellites. Now this is probably the most extreme response. Russia definitely has the capability to destroy satellites. They've demonstrated direct ascent weapons, actually like a missile launched from the ground all the way up to destroy a satellite. They've also demonstrated capabilities of maneuvering spacecraft in orbit to interfere with other satellites. The one the biggest advantage that SpaceX has going for it is they have so many Starlink satellites. If Russia wanted to destroy the constellation to significantly disrupt coverage, it would be a major undertaking. <clears throat> it would be impossible for Russia to deny, and it would be very easy because of that for everyone to attribute the tax to Russia. So likely that is not the way they would go if they wanted to disrupt Starlink. The, the technique of choice is really either disrupting through cyber means by actually hacking into the satellites or some part of the ground station network, or potentially just trying to take advantage of the system by either uh, intercepting communications or directly jamming communications over an area. So if we look at that aspect, jamming, Russia probably has the capability to do a fairly significant jamming uh, attack in the area. It might be difficult because of the directionality of the Starlink signals. They're relatively narrow beam width and they're aimed directly at each satellite going overhead. So in terms of jamming, it would have to be a fairly kind of direct jamming coverage. Uh, probably from an airborne platform, an airplane or something, uh, beaming down signals to overload the receivers. Or potentially ground stations jamming by broadcasting signals up at the satellites themselves. Both of these are probably pretty difficult because it's probably not something that's been well tested before. Uh, definitely possible though. I'd be really interested to see if anything like this happens in the area. Another aspect, the kind of interception aspect. So this is, say they let the Starlink system continue to operate as normal, but they try to take some action to actually listen in on the communication. There's the RF link from the dish up to the satellite. Potentially, I mean, you could have an airplane up there that's listening in on the signals. That seems particularly difficult, again, with the speed at which the signals can flip from satellite to satellite, and the amount of coverage continuously you would need. I think potentially more feasible is looking at the ground stations themselves, particularly because coverage wasn't already present in the Ukraine. There's probably a limited number of ground stations that would be used to provide that link. And Russia definitely has the, the covert techniques and infrastructure in place to physically reach those ground stations and you know do something there. Whether or not they could set that up quickly enough, 
Effectively, they would be looking at the fiber links going in and out of the station and could they tap into those, receive the signal. That's no guarantee that they would actually be able to see the communications from the user terminals in Russia, sorry, in the Ukraine, because they're probably heavily encrypted and hopefully with an encryption that Russia doesn't have the technology to break. So again, unlikely that this could be used to intercept communication, but definitely something that's been brought into the spotlight and I'm really interested to see what happens. So with all these different types of attacks, again, it's really opening up Starlink to the scrutiny of an effective and advanced cyber army like Russia. And it's because of that expertise that I think a cyber attack on the Starlink system is probably the most likely type of response if Russia intends to take any action on the Starlink system. Because a cyber attack, particularly at this stage when the system is in beta, is the most deniable type of attack. If Starlink goes down, well, they've had disruptions before, and it might be hard to conclusively say that this was caused by Russia. Now, I imagine that from the moment they were asked if they would provide coverage to Ukraine up to now when the moment that Elon Musk tweeted yes, hopefully teams of people at SpaceX were evaluating if they were sufficiently protected and could actually monitor for some type of attack like this. I imagine all the security teams on the Starlink side of things are awake, probably getting ready for 24 seven coverage with all hands on deck to be monitoring the system and trying to identify any attacks. Now, because the constellation is worldwide and the satellites are always moving, the attack might not come from Russia. In fact, it's highly likely that it wouldn't. Russia, to be more deniable, would try to route the attack from somewhere else. And because of their skill at the internet, uh, they could probably come up from anywhere in the world to attack ground infrastructure, ground stations. And because of their likely fairly advanced human intelligence network, they can presumably launch physical attacks, you know, with a, a ground station or, or user terminal intended to be malicious, uh, also from anywhere on the earth, really. I have a lot of confidence in the Starlink security posture. This is a brand new system designed without a lot of legacy baggage. It was designed with security in mind, and they've been running an active bug bounty program for quite a while now. So a lot of the low hanging fruit should presumably have been you know, detected and fixed. Um, really, this is a system that was you know, vertically integrated, all one company designing from the base to the top. So they're removing a lot of the supply chain type risks that might affect other kind of equivalent projects. So again, this is probably well designed from a security perspective, and I'll be watching very closely and listening to any details just to see if any impact, any probing from Russia has any effect on the operation of the system. As always, if you're interested in this stuff, subscribe down below, hit that bell to get notified of any new updates. I'll be posting videos as soon as I hear any details. Thank you everyone for watching. See you next time.